And tonight we have the This Is Your Life book in here because we're on our way to the Shirtle Art Gallery in the Century City Shopping Plaza in Los Angeles to surprise one of Hollywood's great stars, a fine actor who is sometimes a Western hero, who has made people laugh, has held them in suspense, and whose love scenes have won female hearts the world over. But tonight, we'll catch him in the role of a proud father. His son and daughter-in-law run the gallery, and he thinks a television show is filming a program about their new collection. He's coming to help, and he's even contributed one of his own paintings. We'll leave now to unveil our surprise. This is Your Life, an American tradition with Ralph Edwards is brought to you by Dove for Dishes. The more you wash dishes, the more you need Dove. Well, what do you think, Dad? You think 150 is too low for a Glen Ford original? Oh, come on, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> take that down, will you? Huh? <laughs> Somebody, let me take that off. Oh, it no, looks no, good. No, I think no. we have a customer, honey. Hey, Linda. Cedar. Hi. Hey, what, what a wonderful gallery. You should do is pay somebody is. $150. <laughs> Where's the abstract that is... Uh, this is this is it. Oh, that is that. But I tell you, I'm more in the market for a portrait tonight, a very special portrait of, uh, of this doing? fellow here. <laughs> because... <laughs> <laughs> Glenn Ford, this is your life, my friend. And listen, I think, Peter, that you had better draw in the uh, first row oh, well, in the Glenn Ford. Come on, you're canvas. putting me, Ralph. I want to uh, remind me to do this somewhere else or something. Well, Ralph, there's a lot of things I could say about Dad. I uh, got him uh, kind of unawares here. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, no. Keep her rolling, Peter. Right. Is it grinding for the nation? Here? I, uh, I don't know. Aside from being a, a, a heck of a father, I, uh, I'm proud to say that uh, he's a great actor, and uh, I love him very much. And we're <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm happy we could honor him. Here yeah. Day. Well, he's got, a, I know, a lot of uh, interests outside of acting too. And Glenn, you certainly have done a good job with this man. It sounds like, anyhow. You've uh, you well, made your I, work uh, and all that, didn't well, you? Well, yeah, when I was uh, when I was younger, I, I this, had a... Is this really... This is your... Life? Yeah, this is the whole shot here. You're uh, you're in it, man. With, you, know, <laughs> you are kidding. <laughs> did he make you yeah, uh, work yeah. with your allowance? And yeah, you I did. Your own uh, I, when I was no, growing up... No, let me tell you before you say, if this is really... I think, are, are those cameras really running? Yeah, that's, re that's really running. You, you got well, it. All right, then. I'll say honestly that I'm... Well, you really got me. Uh, well, look, I, 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 let me say that I'm so proud of this guy and this lovely lady that I can't... Well, we're proud of you, too. And you guys, listen. No, wait, 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 I'm sure that uh, uh, Dad here is going to forgive me. Well, come on. I'd like to, to read a telegram that uh, came in to you today, Glenn. Really, it's... Uh, me on. This is a lot no, of... No, it came from uh, the White House, Washington, D.C., and it's addressed to you and care of us here at This Your Life. And uh, it said, in honoring you, meaning you, Glenn Ford, yeah. this is your life honors a man whose strong love of country and desire to serve has made him an inspiration for countless fellow citizens. My personal admiration for you is second to none, and I welcome this opportunity to acknowledge publicly not just the wealth of talent, but the generosity of spirit that have earned you such a special place in the hearts of all Americans, signed Richard Nixon. And that's enough to get your life rolling here. And let's hurry back to our This is Your Life Theater, where we'll meet the people who will complete your colorful portrait so aptly sketched here by the president. Come on. <laughs> and here are Ralph Edwards and his surprise. This is your life guest, Glenn Ford. Come on over on this side and sit right here. Oh. <laughs> Your people. I don't believe it. We're going to tell the many-sided story of a man who has made over 150 movies, who in real life has served his country as a Marine private in one war and a Navy captain in another. 
You're a skilled carpenter, an electrician. You make your own wine and <laughs> grow your own vegetables in the heart of Beverly Hills, no less. Make my own cigars. Yes. <laughs> you have climbed rugged Mont Blanc in the Swiss Alps, can ride with the best <clears throat> of cowboys, and are a graduate of the Cordon Bleu School of Cooking. You're a 32nd degree mason. No wonder you recently told a friend you have never been bored one day in your life. Anyhow, you were born in Quebec, Canada. You were the uh, only child of Liana and Newton Ford. By high so. school, you've developed a definite interest in the theater. You're active in the school drama school. club, and when you graduate from Santa Monica High, you join every little theater outfit that yeah, you can fine. find. Yeah, fine. You meet a young pilot who is also intrigued with the yeah. stage. Oh, yeah. yeah. I tried to teach Glenn to fly, and he tried to teach me to act. You're a good pal from those early days. Now a senior pilot for American Airlines from Scottsdale, Arizona, Bill McCormick. Here's Bill. Did uh, Glenn ever learn to fly, Bill? Uh, <laughs> I don't no. believe this. I haven't seen him in 30 years. Come on, sit down over there. Why don't you? Is it 30 years? 31 years. Did he ever learn to fly? No, he, I, I always thought he'd do better in front of the camera than the cockpit. And, <laughs> and you know, he was always so determined. Uh, he would always manage to master anything he ever did. Say, do you, do you remember when you used to parachute jump for $15 a jump? Yeah. I did five in one day, and I made $15 a jump. And that was when the, the uh, Los Angeles was uh, around the International Airport was, um, was lima bean fields, as you remember. And, and Jumped he, into limas? <laughs> yeah, I did five jumps in one day for $15 a jump for the uh, free falls, actually. You, you'd never jumped before? No, and I, I don't think I ever will again. <laughs> <laughs> but Bill... Uh, Oh, how nice to see you. Good to see you. You and uh, Glenn were in the same little theater group, Bill. Yeah, Santa Monica Players. Yeah. Um, but you don't know about this, what he's done. <laughs> you don't, uh, don't... Yeah, we're going to find out a little bit of that. Uh, did you think this man had talent? Oh, we all knew he had talent, and uh, we knew he, he would do it. And, and what, uh, what magnetism even in those days? We Bill just McCormick, uh, as Glenn intimates, you've done some exciting things yourself, including uh, being Admiral Byrd's autogyro pilot on his second, second expedition. Second Bird expedition, uh, right. The South Pole. Thank you, Bill McCormick. You see, Glenn. Thank you. 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 Thank Oh, man. He Your first time Glenn ever read for me, I said, this boy has a real flair. So I coached and encouraged him. Your longtime friend, the man who always knew you'd make it, drama coach Harold Clifton. Here's him. You were the director of the Santa Monica Players, Harold Sedano. I'm gentlemen. proud to say that I was. You know, all <laughs> through this time, I had uh, complete assurance in myself that this fellow would be a star someday. Mm -hmm. That is not carpentry either. Mm -hmm. But we had an awful time with the casting directors uh, around town. We couldn't convince them anywhere. I took this fellow into every studio in this town. They all turned him down. They classified him as a character juvenile. <laughs> they were all wrong. I was Glenn's first leading lady, and he played a great love scene. Your co-star in the Santa Monica Players production of Parnell, still from Santa Monica, Mrs. Grace Hickson. Grace Hickson. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh, um, this Ralph, night. I wonder if Harold and Glenn remember the night that Glenn was doing his big death scene in Parnell. The last <laughs> words of the show were, some things just have to happen. And just as Glenn was dying in my ar arms, the fireplace in the set collapsed. <laughs> 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 the audience roared and Glenn died in more ways than one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> remember that? Thank you, Grace <laughs> Hickson and Harold Clifton. Yes, uh, Glenn, we know your father passed away in 1940, and you wanted to uh, say, I'd ask, what did he give you? And you wanted to answer, and we yeah, kind of cut you well, off. He, uh, well, he, uh, my dad, and uh, I, uh, 
I wish you were here. Well, uh, <clears throat> anyhow, uh, oh, I wish my dad were here. He, uh, he, tell, he, he taught me to, uh, he wouldn't let me have a car until I could take a car apart and put it together again. And uh, the one thing he said, he said, Gwilin, because I was Gwilin then, and uh, uh, he said, you've got to learn a trade because, uh, you know, uh, I, I like this, the theater and the, what you're trying to do, but learn a trade. So he taught me to build a house, actually, and uh, to put the car together again. And I know you always regretted that he didn't live to see your later success. Yeah. Things start to happen for you when Agent Gummo Marks gets you a contract at Columbia Studios. But just as your film career is getting off the ground, the Second World War interrupts. You enlist in the Marine Corps as a private mm -hmm. and serve in the South Pacific for two years, coming out a sergeant. How'd you make the switch to the Navy, Glenn? Uh, because uh, uh, I was working with the Navy, and uh, they figured that I should have a Navy commission rather than, like, say, uh, you know, a lieutenant commander rather than a, a major in the Marine Corps, so I switched because I was working with the Navy, and it was that way. And you, uh, this was after your discharge, and you joined the Navy Reserve, I think, at that time. Immediately, yes. In 1967, as a captain in the Naval Reserve, you're ordered to active duty in Vietnam. Yes, correct. You served three months with the 3rd Marine Amphibious Forces in Da Nang and Khe Sanh. I'm proud of you, Glenn. You're a brave officer, a good American, and a loyal friend. The voice of a man you served under and admire greatly, your loyal friend, General Lewis W. Walt, U.S. Marine Corps. Here's the big man. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. We're all honored to have you here tonight, General. Ralph, I'm delighted to be here this evening and have a chance to talk about this man. Glenn and I spent a lot of hours together in a helicopter in Vietnam, up near Khe Sanh, along the BMZ. We went up to the front lines a number of times, talked to the men on the outposts, talked to the men in the foxholes, had to dodge some artillery shells and mortar shells now and then. Phew. But uh, I want to tell you, Ralph, he's just as brave in real life as he is on the television or movie screen. Thank you very much, General I Lewis. Glenn Ford, in 1943, you marry the great motion picture dancing star, Eleanor Powell. Mm -hmm. Your son, Peter, is born, and your marriage ends in divorce in 1960. We couldn't begin to list all the films you've starred in, but there was one titled Texas, which you made in your early days at Columbia. Yeah. <laughs> In that particular film, uh, the only way I could get a decent performance out of that fellow was with a gun. <laughs> Another good friend and one of Hollywood's great directors, George Marshall. I know enough about his life anyway. I know. Know they get me in here. Sit down, John. <laughs> yes, you sit right over there. <laughs> well, oh, I hope uh, hope you left the gun at home anyhow. Uh, you, I can tell you about this man. Well, tell us about the story of the gun. What's he talking about? Real bullets? Well, he wanted us to be frightened, and uh, <laughs> who's we? And the show? Bill, Bill Holden and I, oh. and uh, he decided that he was going to do a scene where we were going to be uh, frightened. And we obviously weren't frightened enough, so George got up on a ladder and shot a 30 out 6 rifle over our heads, and he frightened us. <laughs> George, you've directed uh, Glenn in so many pictures, I, I gather you two like to work together. I tell you, I've done seven, eight, what, how many pictures oh, with George? Know, but I liked them all. Yeah, I did too, love. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I'd do seven or eight more immediately, provided it was George, because this is one of the... One of the best directors in this town. George Marshall, <laughs> thank you very much. It's going all around. Beautiful director. What a beautiful director this man is. You're a busy young man. When you resume your career after your World War II service, mm -hmm. you're given a key role in a picture that has become something of a classic. You're cast opposite beautiful Rita Hayworth in yeah, Gilda. Rita, yeah. Uh, Glenn, Rita has something she wants to say to you from San Francisco. 
Where? Hello, Glenn. I'm disappointed that I can't be there to honor you in person tonight. But you see, I'm at the San Francisco International Film Festival. And guess, guess what film uh, everyone wants to see? Gilda. Remember how you slapped me around on that one, Glenn? <laughs> but then I got in a couple of slaps that you too, you know. Actually, we had a wonderful time making that film. You're not only a fine actor, you've been my dear friend and the best neighbor a woman ever had. And to show you what a great friend I am, I won't even mention our great epic together, The Loves of Carmen. <laughs> you know, I just, I loved you in those Toreador pants. I really did. And kidding aside, Glenn, I'm so pleased Ralph Edwards is doing your life tonight. I loved being a part of it. And I love you. Thank you, Rita Hayworth. <laughs> Rita Hayworth. And congratulations on your festival, and thanks to Curtis Roberts Productions for helping to have Miss Hayworth at the right place. I must tell at you the right time. about Rita. Uh, I did the first intimate, let's say, what do you call it, love scene, I think, mm -hmm. with Rita. And I've loved her for so many years. And she's my next door neighbor, and I still love her. Though you're good in the romantic clinches, Glenn, you prove no, your versatility with films point. like Blackboard Jungle, okay? And Tea House of the August Moon. Yeah. You also become established as a cool, rugged type in westerns. Yeah. There's oh, Evil Gun. Yeah. 310 to Yuma. <laughs> Cowboy with Jack Lemmon. And a wonderful wry comedy western with Hank Fonda titled The Rounders. Oh, yeah, The Rounders. Yeah. On television, you introduce <laughs> your fans to a new breed of lawman, the dedicated sheriff of Cades County. Mm -hmm. Cowboy, I got old fooler out here. He'll be waiting for you after the show. Your good pal, Glenn, the all-time great rodeo writer, Casey, Casey. Tibbs. Casey! <laughs> Casey! Sit down, fellas. Just who or what? <laughs> who or what is old Fooler, Casey? Well, Fooler, I'll tell you, oh, is the old bronc that give Glenn a pretty rough time in the rounders. Yeah. And uh, we had a lot of fun making that movie, Ralph, but uh, there's one thing that Glenn got awful upset about. He had a hat that he'd worn, uh, I don't know how many westerns. Yeah. And somebody just oh, walked yeah. off with it. That's right. And that sure made Glenn mad. Oh, yeah, I got a little bit So, putting it here, uh, let's break in a new one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Ralph will autograph it for you after the show. We'll all <laughs> sign it. You had about 200 in that other. That's right. The, the other one is full of autographs. We'll all autograph it after the okay, show. Casey. Casey Tibbs, thanks. No, You're don't next. let him this go without... Life no, no, the best part of my life is with Casey. <laughs> <laughs> You're letting him go without... Well, he'll him. be around. There's a party Holy after. mackerel. He knows about this is your life. He was a subject <laughs> on this. <laughs> he brought you that. Glenn, one of your friends is at the Pentagon in Washington tonight, although he couldn't be here because of the pressures of his high office. Here from Washington is the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Elmo R. Zumwalt. Hi, Glenn. This is Bud Zumwalt. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person tonight, but I am glad to have this opportunity to tell your fans about the other Glenn Ford. This is, of course, the real-life Glenn Ford who finds a surprising amount of time to devote to the improvement of his Navy through his service as a Naval Reserve Captain. This isn't because you have a lot of time on your hands to do so. I'm told you don't need the money. When you talk about patriotism these days, some people tend to head for the door. And yet, I can find no other explanation for why you, my friend, have devoted the kind of time you have to Naval Reserve service. Winston Churchill used to refer to reservists in his country as twice a citizen. May you continue to enjoy success in both of your careers. Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Elmo R. Zimmer. Thank you. The best, Glenn, hmm? It's the best thing that happened to the Navy it was Admiral Zumwalt. The best thing that happened to our Navy. Glenn, there is one more person who belongs in your life portrait, someone you hold most dear. Hmm. Glenn, 
After your father died, you were there beside me. Oh my and gosh, all these mother, years, you have been here? there whenever I needed you. Tonight, I'm so happy to be here beside you. Your mother, oh, Mrs. Leanna it. Ford, and the other actor in the Ford family, Peter, and his wife, Linda. And here comes Mom. <laughs> Quite a fellow, yeah. isn't it? Well, I've been always proud of him. You know that. Yes, Jim. indeed. I call him Glenn. Yes. <laughs> uh, Bellum, I mean. Yes. And, uh, but tonight's the proudest <clears throat> night of all. I'm sure it is. Please. From delivering newspapers to movies to the DMZ to your vegetable garden. Hand me that, Peter, will you? Uh, Miss Ford. <clears throat> It's all on this gold charm bracelet <laughs> designed by Marshall Jewelers of Fifth Avenue, New York City. All of Glenn's life on there. We'll hold this for you. And for you, Glenn, a videotape of this may program. I say so something? You... Yes, indeed. Please, you may. This is the reason for everything. Oh. I love her more than me, more than anything, more than my life. No, I, I mean this, my love. I can tell you all the, all the sons and mothers all over America are, are really mighty. No, if it weren't for her. Nothing. Glenn, uh, that statement and all the statements that you heard tonight will be on this videotape of the program so you can always uh, revisit your friends who've been uh, <coughs> hiding away, by the way, at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. You didn't know they were all here. Uh, I didn't know. Anything. Oh, the general's over there. <laughs> swimming pool. Oh, no, that's wrong, uh, General. I don't want to get you in trouble. Well, we've completed your portrait, Glenn, a portrait of a fine actor and a good citizen. A guy who, as he says, has never been bored one single day. Not for a moment. Glenn Ford, this is your life. Thank you. This is your life has been brought to you by Dove for Dishes. The more you wash dishes, the more you need dogs. Our This Is Your Life subjects receive an easy-to-operate Panasonic color videotape player. Panasonic, just slightly ahead of our time. The Pontiac Granville, a big, comfortable luxury car. Granville is as far as you can move up in a full-size Pontiac. Style, smooth, graceful ride, sensible price. The wide track people have a way with cars. Air Canada has twice as many flights to ten times as many cities as any other airline flying to Canada. The uncongested gateway to Europe. Fly to Canada, Europe to Caribbean, let's go there together, Air Canada. Bob Warren, This Is Your Life is a Ralph Edwards production.